27 years ago, I uh, had my first Holy Saturday service here. It was um, meant, and it is meant, to be a different type of service. There is no give and take from the congregation. There is no standing. There is singing. But everything is done from one perspective because our Lord, out of respect for Him, this is a time when He was in the grave and in hell uh, proclaiming His victory for us, but we saw none of that activity. And so this night, we are very much... Uh, not the issue, but he is. And so all this is centered on our purpose of proclaiming what he has done and what he is doing. Let us begin with prayer. Gracious Father, we know that as your people we are sinful. We know that we are deserving of nothing. And yet, you have endured all things. You are now proclaiming for us your victory. And we as your people are humble before you so that we can once again be uplifted and strengthened by your truth and truly be guided to touch the lives of others. So we place this time into your hands and we ask that you would enrich all that we do as we look to and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It shows two different places. 
the place of our Lord and our place. Those are not equal. He is higher, more powerful, more wise, more loving, more caring, more forgiving, more everything than we can ever be. And this expresses it so that we once again have it reinforced in our understanding. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud, bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the year, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Almighty God, by your word you created and sustained all things, and by your spirit you renew your creation. Grant us now the blessing of your spirit and lead us to grow in the knowledge and truth of your word and guide us in our faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
through our justification, you proclaim that we join you in the eternal victory over sin and death. Grant that all who are given a new heart and a new spirit a newness of life in the fellowship of the body of Christ. Through Jesus Christ, our victorious Lord. Amen.
Kids, I, I, want, I want to explain to you what this day is about. And uh, I'm using something that most everyone can recognize. It's called a box of Kleenexes. When Jesus went into the tomb, there were a group of men who had this really strong desire. They wanted to make fun of the Lord once again. They wanted to insult him and insult his disciples. And so when they went to Pilate and said, can we have a guard? And the reason they wanted a guard to do it was because they wanted to go and celebrate the Sabbath and not be looked at as bad and evil. So they sent and made someone else work in their place. Amazing when you think about how uncaring they were. But they did something that was normal of the day. They took a piece of rope. It was usually about this long. And on the side of the rock, they would put a big piece of wax and melt it and then smash the uh, rope into it and take the other and put it on top of the rock that would cover the hole. And they would put a big piece of wax there and slap it in and the, the rope would be in both places so that if you moved it at all, it would show that someone had disturbed it. So they set up everything. And so Saturday came. And when you would come to the tomb, if you walked to the tomb, it looked like a tomb. There was no activity. There was no sounds. There was nothing going on. Now, this box of Kleenex, at the top of it, has a seal. The reason it has a seal on top of it is so that when you go to the store and you pick it up and look at it, if the seal is broken, you know that someone has opened it and messed up the Kleenexes. And especially now, when we're so worried about the virus, we want boxes with seals in it. It shows that something is inside, but we can't see it. But that we know what it is. Well, this day is when we are reminded about what the Father did for His Son. He allowed Him on this day to honor the Sabbath by his body resting. Jesus never once did not honor the Sabbath. He always rested on the Sabbath. And in the plan the Father had, in the most unique of ways, Jesus honored the Father by resting on this day, his body resting, laying in a tomb with no apparent activity. It was an amazing gift to we who are believers to understand how fully Christ completed everything that was needed so that we would be saved. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Holy Saturday is unique. You can't preach a lot of stuff because it's pretty narrow in focus, and it's supposed to be. It's called honoring our Lord. This is the narrow focus. Our scripture is really quite unique, and I love how our scripture works, but the scripture has left gaps purposely. The Father of Heaven said this is the only thing they need to know, they don't need to know any more information, so he gives us a little bit, especially on Holy Saturday. On Holy Saturday, what we know is this. Colossians 3.15 tells us that Jesus went before all those who were in prison, in hell, and he declared for them and to them that he was the victor. And he brought shame to all of them, which means in English. He made them all bow to their knees. On this day, the Lord, as part of his exaltation, now exaltation in the scripture means that he was raised to the level that he was supposed to be as God. And as soon as he died on the cross, as soon as he breathed his last, his exaltation started. He had completed all the work the Father had wanted him to complete. He had done all the walking, all the, all the pain, all the suffering. He endured everything. But now, when he gave up his own spirit, when he decided when he was going to die and he placed himself into the hands of the Almighty Father, the Father then said, go finish your task. 
And so he went to hell. He went to hell as the almighty, the all-powerful God. And when he came into hell, it was this overwhelming thing for him. Because here was the almighty God, and it wasn't anything they had any ability to have any power over. When he came into their presence, they all went to their knees, including Satan. Not because they believed in him, not because he forced them, but because of who he was. He was this almighty God, and in the presence of almighty God, you cannot help but fall. And so the promise is given to us by the Holy Spirit that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. It is the most remarkable statement given to us about what the Lord assures us of this day. Not only is his victory complete, except for his rising from the dead, but that is being done tomorrow, on Sunday. A declaration to us of a new beginning, a new day that is holy before the Father in heaven. The old Sabbath was chosen because it was the end of creation and the day of rest. The resurrection, where our Lord was pointing us to, was to do so that we could decree to the whole world, this is the one who is the victor over death and hell and Satan and all the powers of evil. And he is one for us. So on this night, we are so strongly reminded of the wonder of our Lord's love for us. And that on this day, he removed the power of death and hell and Satan because as a promise is, nothing can separate us from his love. Though the tomb looked like there was no activity, because the truth was, inside it, there was none. But the spiritual activity that was taking place, the power that our Lord was demonstrating, the wonder of what he was doing on our behalf, because he went there to say, these are my people, and they will be my people forever. So you have lost. A remarkable concept and a remarkable knowledge that he gives to us. He understands we don't need to know a whole lot more than that. Because knowing that, we know of our salvation. May we always understand and hold strong to what he has given. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, this night, you have assured us of the hope and the life we have in you. You have proclaimed that you decree our victory because of you, and that we now have the security of life and hope that will last forever. And so we, this night, thank you. We humbly place ourselves into your hands. And we rejoice at the hope in which we are able to live. You have given us the privilege of bringing before you our fellow members. And this night we bring first of all the Millers. Stephanie, Ian, Elijah, and Joshua. For Stephanie, we ask that your strength and wisdom would be upon her. That you would touch her heart and lighten her mind and guide her each and every day. And keep her always ever close to you. For Ian, Elijah, and Joshua, keep them under your care. Guide them according to your wisdom. Touch their hearts. Lift them up with your spirit. Provide them the goodness far beyond their understanding. And always hold them ever close to you. For the Millers, for Bob and Cheryl. For Bob and Cheryl, we thank you, Lord, for the many years you have given them together, for the love that they have enabled, been able to share, for the love of their children and their grandchildren, and the goodness that you have enabled them to give to many others. May you always keep them ever close to you, bind them ever closer to each other, and continue to stand near them. For Lois, Lord. For Lois, we ask, gracious Lord, that you would be with her, that you would truly touch her and bless her as only you can. We thank you, gracious Lord, for the strength that you have given her and the many lives that you have enabled her to serve and touch. And we ask that you would continue, continue to keep her under your care and provide her your help and your blessings. 
And once again this night, dear Lord, we are privileged to turn to you and pray the prayer that your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.